software bloat. What does that mean, software bloat? The term, it, it's so often used nowadays, people talk about that distro is bloated, that desktop environment is bloated, or what have you. But what does that mean, to be bloated? Is it something to worry about, or is all this talk about bloat just a meme? That's our topic for the day. So let's define bloat in terms of software. What do we mean by bloated software? Well, the term bloated is going to mean different things depending on who you ask. It, it depends on who's using that term and the context that they're using that term. So the standard definition of software bloat is the development of software where each newer version, each successive version of that software becomes noticeably slower, uses more RAM, uses more CPU, requires more disk space, etc. Having higher hardware requirements than the previous versions without really making any noticeable improvements or adding any new features that are worth that trade-off. That is what we talk about when we talk about bloat with software. Bloated sometimes is used to describe software that suffers from feature creep. And that's software that just adds more features than what it really needs. You know, it's not really focused. It doesn't adhere to the Unix philosophy, right? The Unix philosophy, do one thing, do one thing well. So programs that have feature creep sometimes are, are considered bloated by the community. The suckless guys, you guys know about the suckless programs like DWM and ST and Dmenu. The suckless guys talk about bloat in terms of lines of code. To those guys, it's all about writing a program in as few lines of code as possible, which goes hand in hand with feature creep, right? Because you're kind of limited on the number of lines that you're allowed to write this program in. You really can't have feature creep, right? You, you're, when you're constrained by uh, a line of code limit, you really can't afford to add a bunch of new features to your program. But again, the term bloat, it's not really applied consistently with people. I mean, you sometimes get people calling a program bloat just because the program changed its user interface in a way that they didn't like. That's not really bloat. But I mean, if a program still runs, if it still uses the same CPU and RAM and disk, same hardware requirements, and you know that program isn't suffering from feature creep, then just throwing out the term bloat, you know, labeling it as bloat is really not appropriate. So it seems sometimes users perceive bloat to be present when it really isn't. You often see this with older software projects. Uh, so a program that's been around for years and years, you know, eventually it has to start providing its service to a broader market. It starts having to serve a more diverse clientele with different requirements. Of course, you, the end user, you're only going to need a limited subset of those available features for that software. And then all the extra stuff, you're, you're going to consider bloat because you don't need that. But is that really bloat? Because there are other people that actually do require those features and they don't see that as bloat. They see those features as being essential. So you do get people, I think, labeling a lot of stuff as bloat that it really is not bloat. True bloat is measurable. What does that mean? It means true bloat, you can actually put an actual number to it. You can actually find an actual metric and definitively say, yes, that program's bloated. So what are the metrics we could use? Well, again, higher RAM usage, higher CPU usage, uh, higher disk requirements, etc. Actual bloat occurs because developers sometimes, they place greater emphasis, unfortunately, on things like productivity and time rather than efficiency. Sometimes those time constraints that they're under and the need for a developer to finish a project, you know, in some kind of timely fashion, you know, it leads to them cutting a few corners along the way. The end result, what does that do? Well, it often increases, unfortunately, the end user's hardware requirements for running that particular software. In, in essence, it leads to bloat. Now, since there are so many different definitions of bloat for those of us in the Linux community, when we talk about bloat, what do we mean? Well, let me just speak for myself, and it's going to be different depending on context, but typically when I talk about bloat, you know, for example, when I don't want to install something on my machine, I sometimes, you know, say I don't want to install this particular program or library or whatever on my machine because it's bloated. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about disk space is what I'm talking about most of the time. I'm talking about it takes up too much space on my drive. 
especially if I'm limited because sometimes like on my old production machine, not, not this one now, I've got plenty of space on this, but my previous production machine, I had a 500 gigabyte SSD and because of all the VMs and the music I had on that drive, I was kind of limited on space. So I had to be real, really careful about what I installed on that machine. Some of my laptops, they only have 256 gigs SSDs. So, for example, if I'm talking about I don't want to download this particular game on Steam that everybody else is playing, but I can't download it because it's, and I say it's bloated, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about CPU and RAM usage in that case. I mean, who cares? It's a game. You expect those things to take up a ton of CPU and RAM. What I'm talking about is, you know, that particular game takes takes 80 gigabytes of disk space and I just don't have that disk space so a lot of times when I I use the term bloated it seems most of the time actually when I use the term bloated I'm talking about disk space but not always sometimes I use the term bloat in other contexts as well for example when I criticize something like the uh, the Linux kernel or system D as being bloated and I have labeled those particular programs as as bloat Obviously, with those programs, I'm talking about feature creep. When I mentioned the, the Linux kernel and system D, I'm talking about, you know, programs that are not really doing the, quote, Unix philosophy, right? They're doing way more, maybe, than they should. And yet one more different context of me using bloat. You know, sometimes I talk about GNOME, the GNOME desktop environment being bloated. There, I'm obviously not talking about feature creep at all because, I mean, GNOME has no features. I mean, what feature creep, right? There's no features with GNOME. No, with GNOME, when I talk about bloat, I'm talking about the fact that it uses way too much CPU and RAM, way more than really what a desktop environment should. So the term bloat, I mean, it's got a lot of different meanings. I mean, even just speaking on myself, how I use the term personally, I use the term in different contexts, meaning different things. So there's really no consistency with the term bloat. One, one other thing we need to mention is the term bloatware. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about bloatware. What does that mean? Well, that's usually used to describe like uh, unwanted pre-installed software or pre-bundled software, usually on an operating system. So Windows comes pre-bundled with a bunch of trial software that you didn't want, you don't need, you'd rather it not be on your system. That stuff, we typically call that stuff bloatware. So is bloat something that we should be concerned about? Or is all this bloat talk, is it like the latest meme that people love to use? Well, it's a little bit of both. It has become a bit of a meme. Everybody loves to just throw that term around everywhere. This is bloat, that is bloat. But in all seriousness, bloat is something we need to be concerned about because it seems like simple things like, you know, having obvious settings choices and other such stuff, you know, in your operating system, your desktop environment, things that were once common in software. These things are not common now, and I don't know why. Nobody seems to take pride anymore in having a light and fast program with an easy user interface. Uh, it, it's completely different now than it, what it was 30 years ago. It seems like all we have nowadays are these, these developers that maybe think they're smarter than what they really are. They think they're smarter than the developers of the past, and they keep trying to add on and add on you know, to, to things that already work. Take the web, for example. The modern web is a complete dumpster fire compared to the glorious web of, say, the early 1990s. And modern web browsers take far more system resources to run than what they really have any right to do. Because all they're doing, you're, you're just displaying a web page, right? Some HTML and you know, maybe a little JavaScript or whatever. And you're pushing over a gig with one tab open. Why? Why? Uh, it, I can tell you why. Feature creep. We're back to the feature creep argument again. These modern browsers, they have so many features built in now, and they're trying to do so much, much more than what they really need to do. 90% of the features built into these browsers, 90% of the users will never even touch. Are we really going to keep doubling the RAM in our machines every few years just so we can view the web? It's, it's ridiculous. If we're not careful to monitor the situation, Software, really, it becomes very much like a gas, a gas that fills up every square inch of the available space it's in. It just fills up the room, right? It becomes bloated, and that's what software has become. It's become bloated. All this bloat just it makes me angry. It's like there's no beauty, there's no artistic value in software anymore. Software now is all this over-engineered rubbish that people are putting out. Uh, just take Electron, for example. As a matter of fact, if you have some Electron apps on your system, open one of them up. Just open up 
any Electron app like Slack or Discord or Atom, check how much RAM is being consumed. And what are we getting out of all this bloat? What are, what are all these bloated programs giving us that the more minimal programs of the past didn't? I would argue that they're not giving us anything more than those programs of the past. If anything, they're giving us quite a bit less, uh, unless frustration, I guess, counts. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Lior, Philip, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They're the producers of the show. They're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show would not be possible. Also brought to you by that ever-growing list of names, that bloated list of names of all my supporters over on Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of those guys. Again, without them, this show would not be possible. If you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.